Let us please hope that the fifth time is the charm. I am going to film myself editing a book I started a decade ago. The dates at the top are the dates that I have actually spent time typing this book. It's been changed so many times. I've filmed this so many times. And back in 2009, when I wasn't comfortable in front of camera or hearing my voice, I held my flip share in front of the note that I had actually wrote and written. 13 little pages of the original stuff that I wrote for this book. And I didn't like it. I deleted it because I sounded terrible. And now I don't give a shit. I don't care. So we're just going to read through this. I'm going to record the whole process of somebody with OCD writing a book, a horror-based book, over the course of a decade. And if I fix it, I'm going to fix it for you guys. I'm going to fix it in front of you guys on camera. It doesn't matter how well lit I am because you're only going to hear it and read it with me. So basically it says Blizzard Zombies by me on November 10th, 2009. You know how many times that tripped me up? Well, let's continue. All of North America was hit by a massive blizzard. However, this was in no way an ordinary blizzard. It lasted for three solid months till it finally ended on February 10th, 2010. The death toll was staggering as more than half the low... Oh, that's what that was. You see, I shut off hockey's. Just another blooper, people. Gonna stay in because I am so frustrated. It's taking me 30 minutes to record two minutes. If you can believe it. Uh, but let's continue. The death toll was staggering. <clears throat> As more than half the country's population had died off. Most were caught off guard and became stranded in the vehicles where they then froze to death. Others thought they could survive it with Others thought they could survive it wearing heavy layers of clothing, but they were wrong. The ones that survived the blizzard were the ones that just stayed inside and waited it out. But in no way were they but in no way were these survivors lucky because the bodies of those that had died in the blizzard started to wake up. Those that those that had survived the blizzard <clears throat> had to fight to stay alive again. Sorry for the mic issues. It's old equipment, people. Okay, this is a broadcast on the news. We're looking at another scorcher for today here in the Deep South. I'm not getting into character. I'm so exhausted trying to record this for the millionth time. I'm just going to read it. And you guys can get into any character you want for this. I'm not going to. People, if you go outside today, please stay well hydrated. The same cannot be said for our friends to the north. They're in the middle of one of the worst blizzards to ever hit this... To ever hit the country... Ugh! They're in the middle of one of the worst blizzards to ever hit the United States in recorded history. I know it seems hard to believe with the lower states in the mid to upper 90s to well over 100 in some places. Folks have been advised not to travel and to just stay inside and keep warm. We'll have more on this at the top of the hour. Then the first character comes in. Goes narrator. The explanation of what started this maybe like a broadcast, and then the character comes on page two, into character here. That was recorded five months ago. Hi, my name is Jay. For the simple fact that I don't know you and don't wish to know you, I just want to tell my story of survival. Approximately four months ago, we began experiencing a catastrophic blizzard to cover the top half of the country. Okay, this is part that I want to fix. This is basically just a writer with OCD live editing his book to finalize it. 
after a decade. So it's going to be different. It's going to be weird. Don't know how many parts it'll be, but I'm going to go all the way to the end, and that's 20,000 words, and who knows? It could be 50 by the time we're done. I don't know. But clearly, if it's five months ago that it was recorded, and the blizzard's only been four months, and it only lasted three months, then it's going to be, we'll just say four months ago it was recorded, and it ended one month ago. So, got to be careful when editing, because if you edit something, you have to make sure it flows and jives with the rest. So this is where I've had a lot of trip-ups. So, okay. That was recorded four months ago. Hi, my name is Jay. Don't wish to know you. I just want to share my name about. Approximately four months ago, we began experiencing catastrophic blizzard that covered the top half of the country. It then took over the entire country as winter set in. That blizzard ended one month ago today. However, I'm leaving something out. The blizzard was caused by an explosion. A research lab, ignorantly based, which originally said stupidly, but I decided today that that was dumb, so I put ignorantly, and thank God it's a word, I hope. <laughs> a research lab ignorantly based near a cryogenics lab, which I invented, cryogenics lab. None of his stuff is based on reality. It's just based on a blizzard, and I threw in a zombie twist. Enjoy! Okay, uh, ignorantly based near a cryogenics lab in Sackton, Alaska, was developing a chemical to spray on crops. Side note, we went on a field trip in high school and we saw a town called Sackton, or at least my mind said it was Sackton. It may have been Sac City, Iowa, or Sackton, but Sackton became the base for a lot of my books, especially zombie ones. If I couldn't come up with a location or didn't want to get sued or something for using a town, not that it would ever happen, I'm not published yet, but, um, Sackton. It, it was just a town that I saw on a bus ride field trip somewhere, and it has always stuck with me for like 12, 15 years, so I use it in all my books. There is no Sackton, Alaska, and if there is, I've never heard of it. It's just a coincidence, I guess. Sackton, Iowa does not exist. It's just a book character. It's just a the, the place is a character, people. Okay. Um, Sackton, Alaska. Cryogenics Lab was developing a chemical to spray on crops. The spray was intended to help boost the immune systems of all Americans that consume the crops. Problem was that the lab hadn't fully tested the spray and some idiot caused a meltdown that led to the explosion. When the explosion reached the cryogenics lab, it froze the chemical spray and launched it high into the atmosphere, where it then... Okay, should I add the word then? Because I kind of was going to read it with it. Into the atmosphere, where it then later fell as snow. Shh, does that sound right to people? Where it later fell as snow. It sounds like there's more of it is missing there, so I think then chemical spray and launch it high into the atmosphere where it then later fell as snow. Does that sound right? I think it sounds right with the word then in there. Where it then later fell as snow. Now that sounds stupid. Where it later fell as snow. No, we're taking then out. It's fine as is. Okay. Where it later fell as snow. So now that I have you fully up to speed with my situation, here's what's going down. I'm about to go outside the safety of my house. Ugh. Let me reread that. I'm about to step outside the safety of my home in search of food, medical supplies, and you know the rest. I know as soon as I open the door, they'll find me. I added this part. They always do. Because here goes nothing. Sounded like a dumb way to end a paragraph. So I said, they always do. Here goes nothing. Jay opens the door and slowly approaches his vehicle. He gets in and closes the door. He starts the engine, and as soon as they hear it, thousands surround him and he panics. He steps on the gas and plows right through them. He loses them after a while, and so he reaches for a CD to put in. 
A couple miles down the road, he spots something or someone. He slows down and begins to honk, but the person or thing doesn't respond. Keep in mind, when I wrote this originally, by hand, in like 2008, 2009, I was a, teen, a late teen, early 20s, and had no idea really how to write as good as I do now, with the exception of grammar and spelling, because that stuff just never sat well with me. Like semicolons, where commas and stuff should be to separate run-ons and stuff, it just doesn't sound right and doesn't look right and doesn't read right to me. So, just another thing OCD attacks every day is just the fight between what's right and what's not right in writing. And... Sounds like it was maybe it sounds a little rushed character like, but I kind of have no way to alter it without altering the entire book, and I just don't have the strength or time or effort to want to do that. So here goes nothing. I'm gonna throw the characters. It, it's gonna start abruptly, but I think that if this was a movie, there'd be a lot of fillers in between what I've read and stuff. So it would kind of flow right. It would jive. So I'm just going to read it. And if it feels rushed, just know that I know it feels rushed. Characters are getting developed early, but that's important because they, they're compatible in this. You'll see. It'll all make sense, I hope. Um, okay, so Jay, our character... He stops the car and gets out. He yells, Hey, you, stop! Nothing happens. An infected quickly approaches, but Jay pulls out his lucky Glock and shoots it right in the head. The character he was talking to now. She finally responds and sees Jay. He yells, Head to the car. They both run to the car as more infected approach from every direction. Now, that originally said... They both ran to the car as more infected approached from all around. And that just really didn't make sense to me. I think it sounds a lot better with the way that I have reworded it. Where it says, they both run to the car. Okay. They both run to the car as more infected approach from every direction. That sounds like you're really there now, right? Versus past tense. That's what I was going for, and back in the day, I didn't think like that. Now I've written like 40, 50,000 books, or started, and uh, billions of words, probably. Um, I know better, I guess. Okay. They make it into the car and drive away as fast as they can. She introduces herself as M. Jay asks if M is short for anything. She responds with, yeah, it's short for mind your own business. Fair enough. Look, where are you headed? I'm driving to the next town. Sacton, I believe, is the name. Oh, crap. You know what? Um, I guess it's going to be based in Alaska. That's actually not a problem for me. I, I mean, it just I just had an epiphany or whatever it's called. A realization that that's where this is going to have to take place. But I'm okay with that. We'll just see. Okay. Stop the car. This is M talking now. He does and M gets out. And she... Okay. He, he does. And is he does and M gets out. And as she does, she puts her headphones. Now, I wrote this before earbuds existed. So even when I rewrote it a thousand times, I kept headphones. So I'm thinking, should I change this right here and right now to earbuds or just leave headphones? Because if you read it, they're not really like visible. So of course, he's not going to notice the next part. But if they were headphones, you would kind of notice it, I guess. 
But these are technically headphones or earbuds, so I'm just going to leave headphones because that's how it was originally wrote. And if it's back in 2009 and it's taking place in 2009, 2010, gosh darn it, it should stay headphones, right? I'm going to keep it that way. Okay. Puts her headphones back on. He asks her what she's doing, but she doesn't respond. He gets out and approaches her, yelling to turn around, but she keeps walking. Finally, he grabs her and turns her around, not knowing it's him, and pulls out her gun and shoots right at him, missing his head. What the hell are you doing, Em? I'm sorry, I thought you were one of those things. Get back in the car with me, Em. No, I'm not going to Saxon. Why not? Did you hear that? Hear what? Take your goddamn headphones off and listen. Oh no, it's them. Get in the car with me. Get in the car with me quickly. I said no. I'm not going back to Sacton. What do you mean not going back? You're saying you've already been to Sacton? You're saying you've already been to Sacton? That's why I lost everyone. Okay, here's where I mess up. Try to get into character. To immerse myself and I mess up every time. <laughs> That's where I lost everyone. She says in a whisper. Em, just please get in the car with me. You're not alone anymore. We have to hurry now. They'll be here soon. All right, I'll go with you. Now, doesn't that sound a little bit like they trust each other too much early on page three? I feel like there's filler missing, and I I can say it no more than a thousand times and still mean it. Filler is important. If this is going to be a movie someday, it's got to have fillers to make a scene jive and work. But as a book, it works, I guess. I'm happy with it. I can't change it. Characters are going to be rushed. Like I said, it's going to be rushed. J and M, by the way, are my initials, but it's also... The original, when I dreamed this up the first time, it was Jake Gyllenhaal and Mila Jovovich. Mila before Jake, though. But I wanted to write this originally for Mila and Jake, but well, who knows if they'd ever do a movie together. But if they ever want to, hey, you can do it. Acting like an idiot now. Let's just keep reading, shall we? J and M are on the main highway driving to Sacton. Night falls. And about a mile outside the town, they see a huge explosion. Jay stops the car, and they both start. Oh, uh, Jay stops the car, and they both stare in shock. As the explosion illuminates this, as, <laughs> as the explosion illuminates the entire night sky, Jay turns to M to ask her what she thinks might have exploded when she disappears. Jay screams. Oh god, I have to scream. <laughs> I'm not in the mood. M! M! Oh my god, I have something in my throat. It sounds terrible. <clears throat> Character, people. It's hard. <laughs> she then reappears naked up the road. Jay spots her and gets out of the car and car to run to her. Jay is horrified by what he sees as he appear as he approaches her. Both her arms and legs. Okay, both her arms and leg. That needs an S. Boop. Okay. Both her arms and legs are covered in bruises and she's shivering uncontrollably. She mumbles through the shivering. Jay. Jay lifts her to her feet and tells her to wait a minute. He races back to the car for a warm blanket and runs back to her and wraps, it, wraps her in it. They begin to walk back to the car when they hear another explosion. They both run to the car and get in knowing the infected would soon be on their way. 
They reach Sacton a couple minutes later and slow the car down in front of a Sacton library. I had fun dreaming this particular um, library scene coming up because it was just so interesting. Uh, they both get out and walk into the library. To their surprise, that it's oh wait, to their surprise that it's open. What? To their surprise that it's open, Jay pulls. To their surprise, it's open. Wow, that sounds dumb, doesn't it? Let's take out this word. To their surprise. Comma, it's open. To their surprise, comma, or to their surprise, it's open. And, J, take out the comma and the word and becomes a comma, a word comma, as I'm going to call it, I guess. So let's take that out and try that. And our word comma, as I'm going to call a term, <clears throat> at one of the most useful fillers in the world. And okay. to their surprise, it's open. And Jay pulls out his gun and tells them to be very quiet and to wait by the door. Jay slowly approaches the first shelf of books and peeks through the cracks, but sees nothing. But he sees nothing. He walks to the next shelf and sees nothing. When he reaches the last shelf, he sees something. Dun dun dun! Just gotta shit out of you? Just kidding. <laughs> okay. He lifts his gun to chest level and asks the figure to come out. It doesn't move. He shoots and the object falls. He rushes to see what it was, only to find out that it was just a coat that had fallen off the coat rack. That had fallen off the coat. Fallen off of the coat rack. <laughs> he goes back to where he left M, only to find that she is no longer there. He looks around but cannot find her anywhere. <coughs> He knows if he screams too loud, it will attract them. But he's unable to. But is he? Un but he is unable to stop himself, and he screams for M. J. Then. Oh, wait. just then, he's grabbed from behind. It's a fully dressed Mila. Or M, but the character is M. But it will be known later that our name is Mila. And I chose to put that in early so that there was no doubt that this was written for Mila Jovovich. So, he, though, as a character, Jay, aka Jake, later, he doesn't know her name is Mila. I'm just putting that there for the people that's reading this or watching this that they know. Um, he's grabbed from behind. It's a fully dressed Mila with her gun and knife in hand. She says, What are you trying to do? Get us killed? Then laughs. <laughs> the hell, Em? Where were you? I went out to the car and got dressed. I was freezing. She could barely move. Yeah, well, I guess that's only a temporary side effect. I feel fine, and all the bruises are gone, and I'm still alive. So did you find anything? I heard a shot. Oh, no, I just <clears throat> killed a coat on a rack. I just I thought it was a zombie. Well, let's go see if we can get a fire started. So you killed the poor coat? That's, that's mean. Jake. Now Jake's name. No longer Jay. But again, Mila doesn't know it's Jake just yet. Jake begins to laugh and stops himself. <laughs> and we should leave. 
Wait, I just remembered something about this library. Follow me, you'll enjoy this. Now this library has over 14,000 books on its shelves, but there are only two worth picking up. Now the librarian that worked here was weird, which is probably why I got along with her so well. It's probably why she also told me about her secret stashes. <clears throat> Now, I've never seen them, but I know how to find them. Okay, it's been... Okay, it's the biggest book on the shelf, closest to the... closest to a dictionary. Here it is. M opens the hollowed-out book and pulls out a flask. Jake says, The old woman hid whiskey in a book in a public library? Just taste it first. Em, I don't drink whiskey. Just taste it. He does, and is very surprised by what he tastes. M, is this white wine? Yes, it is, she says, as she grabs the flask and takes a drink. She may have been crazy, but she did have some class. And no, she may have been crazy, but she did have some class and good taste. So what's the other book? All right, it's her birthday. That's how we find it. <clears throat> now you can see why I had fun writing this particular scene. It was a dream. It was perfect. I wrote it the second I woke up. So, so from this book we go four books to the right, three shelves down, and 1956. We have to count 1,956 books. No. I saw some light. I got distracted, people. Okay. No. 19 is S in the word, in the world books dictionaries. 56 is the last part of the barcode number on the rib of the book we're looking for. Here it is. Are you ready for this? I hope there's still some left. She opened the book to reveal yet another hollowed out space, only this time it's filled with her favorite candy bars. Butterfingers. Jake says, you know, I think I'd have, you know, I think I'd like to have met this lady. I love Butterfingers. Em yells, me too! See, it's like you were destined to meet and come here. We should go now, unless you know of any more secret statues you'd like to share. No, we can go now. They take the flask and the candy bars and drop the books, then leave the library. Leave the library! Em, this is your town. I think maybe you should drive. You're letting me drive the car? You're letting me drive your car? Well, I don't know this town at all, and heck, I like him. I get in the driver's seat before I change my mind. Yes, sir, Jake, sir, she says with a laugh. Where do you want to go first? Well, I don't know. Well, don't you guys have a bunker or city hall or some safe place? Well, if anyone is still alive here and not infected, they would be in the they would be at the town bank. It's the most secure building in our designated it's the most secure building and our designated storm shelter during the storm season. Why a bank? When there's a when there's severe weather, since most people in the town don't have a don't have basements due to the town's poor soil or something, they go there and wait it out. It, was the, it has this vault in the basement that supposedly could withstand a direct hit from a bomb. It's half the size of a football field. And that's where we need to go. Em, how did you lose everyone? I mean, why did you leave Sackton? 
I was hoping you weren't gonna ask me that, but since you've saved my butt twice now, I guess I can tell you. Four or five months ago, I was fishing with my boyfriend. On our way home, we were in the middle of jamming out to this song on the radio when a broadcast interrupted it. It said a huge explosion had just occurred and sacked in Alaska. We paid attention only because the place had the same name as our town. They said a research lab had exploded next to a cryogenics lab. They had no information on the cause on the on the cause of the explosion or if anybody had been killed, so we put it in a CD. When we got home, my parents were packing up the car and told us to hurry to hurry up and get in. They said we had to leave before the storm hit. There wasn't any bad weather, but we didn't argue and got in the car. When we drove past the bank, I asked why we didn't stop. My father said we had to get out of town. He said that there was a dangerous chemical blizzard coming our way. I asked him where we were going, but before he could answer, the police a policeman standing in the middle of the road stopped a car stopped our car. He told us to go back home. He said something about the roads being closed up ahead due to heavy snowfall and whiteout conditions. My father got out and argued with the policeman. He said, I have to get my family out of this town. I have to get my family out of a town. I have to get my family. <laughs> Let's try again, Shadowbay. He said, I have to get my family out of town before the, before the blizzard hits. The cop didn't listen and he tried to force my father back into the car, but my father fought back. He punches the cop in the gut. Okay. This is reading like it's currently happening and I wanted to say he punched the cop in the gut. And the cop... Okay. He punched the cop in the gut and the cop shot him. And the cop shot my father in the chest. That sounds more fluid, right? comma there. Or not a comma space. He punched the cop in the gut and the cop shot my father in the chest. No. He punched the gut of the cop. No. He punched the gut. No. He punched the cop in the gut so the cop shot my father in the chest. So the cop shot my father in the chest? He punched the cop in the gut so the cop shot my father in the chest. That sounds good. For now. Not the situation, but it, it flows, so it sounds better now. I guess. And all these, like, little problems here, I pay no attention. I tried changing it to those, and it doesn't sound right to me. I'm going to ignore it. He punched the cop in the gut, so the cop shot my father in the chest. He then aimed his gun at my mother... But my boyfriend slammed his car door open and knocked the cop to the ground. By this time, my father was dead and my mother had driven away. About a mile up the road, it began to snow. It was weird because it wasn't even winter yet. My mom stopped the car and told us to stay put. She got out and walked a ways up the road. We could hear her, but then the snowfall started getting thicker. A few minutes passed and my boyfriend got worried, so he got out and went to go find her. Then out of nowhere, she reappeared and grabbed him. Then she began to bite him. Blood went everywhere and... I screamed and she looked at me. She started running towards the car, so I hopped over the front seat and into the driver's seat. 
I turned the car around and drove back into Sacton as fast as I could. So that's how I lost everyone. Okay. It's an interesting little, like, scene that happened because I think on the screen it would be pretty damn amazing to film that. Oh boy. They arrive at the Sackton Bank and then parks the car in the back of the building. They enter the bank through the back door. M leads J to the vault. Well, how do we get in? That's an easy one. I see all people that move to or lived in Sackton had a chip implanted in their hands. You just stick your hand in this box. It takes 10 seconds to scan and voila. The vault opens. Whose idea was this? I don't know, some guy that invented things around here. He, ended, he invented lights that shut themselves off too. Nobody in town talked to him though. Anyways, one day he stood up during a town meeting and stated, started talking about this new invention. It could scan our hand chip, then open this huge door in just 10 seconds. Of course, people thought he was nuts. Shh. Did you hear that? Get your gun out now. Follow me and stay quiet. I have a better idea. How about you follow me? I know this fault and you don't. Okay, but be careful. Did you? Yeah, I heard it that time. It came from over there. What the hell is that? Shit, look. They're all dead. There it is again. A zombie? Shit, here it comes. Damn. My gun isn't loaded. Shoot at him. Em, shoot the damn thing. That's... That's the... <laughs> em passes out. Jay loads his gun and shoots the zombie right between the eyes. Em, wake up. What happened? Are you alright? I'm fine. <clears throat> what happened? Why didn't you shoot it? Remember the cop I told you about? One that shot my father. That's him. Where it used to be. I saw him and got lightheaded and passed out. I wonder how he got down here. Wasn't he the town sheriff? I mean, would he have a chip in his hand? That's just it. He wasn't our town sheriff. See his uniform? Is that Chicago? Wait. I know him. You already said that, Em. No, he's not a sheriff. I remember that face. He was on the news. What was he on the news for? He committed those murders in Chicago. Police last saw him heading south of Chicago. I guess he must have killed the sheriff in Chicago and then stole his uniform. Then he must have changed directions to throw the police off. Well, he's dead now. There's still the matter of how he got in here. He had disguised himself. Okay, he was disguised as a sheriff. He could have picked up a family and drove them here. Then he just walked in with them undetected. Why was everyone here dead except him? Well, the whole town's not here. I guess half didn't make it to the vault in time. He could have killed them one by one. Look at them all. One man couldn't have killed the, all of them. The zombies must have gotten in here. I, 
guess he could have been infected before he came to the vault. Then when he changed, he must have went on a killing spree. No use pondering about it now. I say we get some rest. We should take turns watching over each other. I'll go first, Em. You should get some rest. Are you sure? Yeah. I want to check out the rest of the vault. You sure? You're sure? Yeah, go ahead and get some rest. I'll wake you in a few hours. Jay walks through the vault room by room and finds nothing. As he's walking back to M, he trips over something. He bends down and picks up a camcorder. To his surprise, it's on and recording. He presses the stop button and plays back what's been recorded in reverse. He shuts it off and makes his way back to M. A few hours pass and he wakes her up, but instead of sleeping, he shows her the camcorder. He turns it on and they both watch the recording. Hi everyone, this is Travis here. Looks like another busy day for me. Apparently the whole town has been sent to the vault. Um, <laughs> I of course decided to stay out for a while to try and record the reason. Take a look for yourself. That is a blizzard heading right for our town. Now I'm keeping my distance because I've been informed that it's a chemical blizzard unlike any other blizzard in recorded history. Uh oh. What the heck is that? What the heck was that? Okay, I'm getting out of here. Okay, I'm getting out of the car to get... <laughs> I'm, I'm jumbling my words here. I'm sorry. Whoa, what the heck was that? Okay, I'm getting out of the car to get a little clearer shot. I just saw something move and it looked human. There it is again. What the... It's just disappearing. Man, I'm glad I got this off them. Oh, shit, more of them. They're like zombies or something. They appear to move through the snow. That's so weird. I think that's enough footage. Getting back into my car. Crap. You're all seeing this one. Up close. I don't think it knows I'm behind it. Ah! Or something like that. <laughs> I'm a bad actor, people. Calm down. <laughs> Travis here again. That was a close one. I've never seen anything like these creatures before. I'm glad I got away. I'm headed to the vault now. People are going to freak out when they see the footage I got. <laughs> Travis out. Okay, where is everyone? And why is it so dark down here? I'm searching a night vision now. Oh my god. They're all dead. Shit, what the hell did this? Who's there? Another victim? Who are you? That's not important. But since I'm going to kill you, I suppose I could tell you. I'm the Chicago killer. How did you get here? The vault, I mean. Non-locals can't access the scanner. I disguised myself as a cop, and I escorted a family down here. Why? How did you kill them all. You're just one man. Oh, but I can do this. Holy shit, you're just like one of those zombie things. Now that you know, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Bring it on, I'm not afraid of you. Oh no? You can disappear. I've seen it already. Trust me, I'm not impressed. Is that so? 
Oh, uh, yes, that's so. What did you do? What did you do? I never go anywhere without my trusty knife. Looks like I get to kill you. Oh, you disappeared again. There you are. Not so easy to do when you're bleeding now, is it? Go ahead, finish me. First you tell me how... How what? How you managed to get infected. You've changed, but you haven't physically changed. You still look like a normal human. Not one of those things, but you can still disappear. Why is that? I don't know. If I did, I wouldn't tell you, but I don't know. Travis here. One more thing before I go. I'm headed to the lower vault. I'm going to leave my PM quarter up here so others know how to find me. The lower vault will be right next to this camcorder. I hope I don't have to wait too long for someone to find me. Travis out. That seemed, that seemed a little bit like an interesting scene I felt back in 2009, so I'm just going to add my inputs throughout when I read this because I think after this point, I've edited it. And... You know, I'll make corrections as I go, but this is already page 12, and it's, it's a little bit smoother now. I have to stop recording every now and then for whatever reason, but I think it's flowing nicely roughly an hour plus into this now when I get it all edited, said, done, whatever. But um, let's go find out now. So now he's put the camcorder down. They've both watched it. And now we're back to the main characters. Jay, where did you find this? So they're walking to the spot where he found it, I'm guessing. Okay, I found it. Or I tripped over it right about here. Check that side and I'll check this side. Jay, over here is a scan. Bingo. Damn, you're a genius. Okay, guns out. You have to be careful. We don't know who or what's down there. The recording is over three months old. It's three and a half months to be exact, Jay. Hey, are you... Travis? How did you know my name? Come with me. Wait, come with me, both of you. I have something to show you. Seems like there needs to be a filler, because, um, bingo, I'm your genius. Okay, guns out, we don't know, okay. We don't know what's down there. The recording is over three months old. It's three and a half months. Oh, okay. This is Travis interrupting them. Okay, it makes sense now. So, there's three characters in this one sentence. Let me reread that again now. We don't know who or what's down there. That's J. Now, this is M. The recording is over three months old. Travis interrupts her. It's three and a half months to be exact. Jay. Hey. Are you Travis? How did you know my name? Okay, so he's asking Travis how did he know his name. It's kind of hard when you have to play the narrator in this reading thing, but it's, it's fun. It's not at all confusing, I guess. Okay, um, come with me, both of you. I have something to show you. You guys brought my camcorder, right? This place has a surveillance system down here. Check this footage out. The guy you watched me kill was the Chicago murderer. Look what he did to everyone. See how fast he moves? He killed them, in, he killed them all in under an hour. Sometimes he disappear. Sometimes he disappear for minutes at a time, and then and reappear and kill again. Oh God, that sounded stupid. Sometimes he disappear for minutes at a time, then reappear and kill again. So did all my footage survive? Is it all there? 
Oh, uh, I don't know. The f first thing I saw was you in a car. Yep, and it's, it's all still there. That's good. I it also has you killing that guy. Look, I didn't even realize I was recording during all of that. Let me check it out. Look, Travis, it can wait. How have you survived down here for three months? Three and a half months, and I haven't exactly been down here the entire time. I take occasional walks out. I take occasional. I take the occasional walk outside, you know, to look for survivors. That is until I figured this radio out. I've made contact several times with other survivors, but every time they try and send me their location, it goes to static. It's like something is purposely interfering with me. It's like something is purposely interfering with the signal or something. What do you mean, purposely? Well, I thought at first it was maybe the blizzard causing interference. Blizzard's been over for going on two months now. Okay, now, if I revert to it, it happened four months ago. It lasted for three months, so this needs to be changed to one month. Now, and I have to take the S off. Make this months. Voila. The blizzard has been over for going on over. The blizzard has been gone for... Okay. The blizzard has been over for going on a month. For going on one month now. So then I thought it was the satellite on top of the bank. Then I heard this message while I was trying to contact other survivors again. What message? Have a listen. You. Oh boy, what happened? Budged up a little bit, I had to scroll back up. Okay, you. You'll never make it out. Travis? You there? Where at? They won't let you. Is that it? Yep. That's the only time I heard it. It hasn't happened again. So, you'll never make it out. They won't let you. It doesn't sound like a prank. It sounds... It doesn't sound like a prank. It sounds... This needs to have an S. Sounds like a warning of some kind. Yeah, but a warning for what? I mean, the blizzard is over, and I'm pretty sure any survivors would know about this thumb. Know about those zombie things by now. Come on, Jay, think about it. You will never make it out. Out of where? We got into this town easily enough. And pretty much everywhere else we've been. Or, and pretty much everywhere else we drove. They won't let you, but it doesn't say who. Well, have you tried contacting the person that made this? Yes, but I haven't been successful. Well, do you mind if I try? Know yourself out. It's not. Know yourself out. It's been weeks since any new signals came in. What? Okay, that part doesn't make any sense. We need to seriously reword this because it makes no sense. Okay. Well, do you mind if I try now? No. Well, do you mind if I try? Know yourself. Know yourself out. It's... Oh! Huh. Must have auto-corrected to knock yourself out instead of know yourself. That's what I meant to say, so... Can-o... Knock yourself out. It's been weeks since any new signals came in. Okay. That makes a lot more sense than when I know yourself out or something. <laughs> Ridiculous. 
This is Jay calling any survivors out there. Told you, there's no one on. Jay calling for any... You'll never make it out. Shh! Listen, did you hear that? They won't let you. This is Jay, repeat your message. This is Jay who's out there. Please respond. Jay, it's probably just recording. Jay. Shh. There it is again. This is Jay. Continue. Jay. Well, it's about time. I thought I'd never get anyone to respond. Who is this and where are you located? I'm Aaron Waters. My current location is a place called Sacton. Here in Sacton, that's where we are. Where are you exactly? I'm in the old library. You were there not even a day ago. We didn't see anyone there. You know there's a basement to this old library. I've been down here for about a month. Crap, I forgot about that. I knew I was forgetting something. Jay, I know exactly where he is. Listen, Aaron, we're coming to get you. Give us about 30 minutes, all right? Roger that, Jay. It'd be nice seeing another face. Over and out. Ooh, exciting. New characters. Okay, so right now, in case you are counting, Jake, Mila, or J and M, Travis, and now Aaron, who hasn't come into character yet, but he will. Gonna be surprised with this character, by the way. Just letting you know right now. Okay. So, who's going and who's staying? One of us has to stay, and I think it should be me. Why? It's your car won't be taking, Jay. I trust you. Besides, both of you can get back in here if anything happens, and I can't. Good point. Travis, get whatever weapon you have, and let's go. Hey, I'm going. Okay, so they kiss or something. Try not to die out there. Now go. You two only have like you only two you two only have twenty five minutes to get to the library. Hurry back. On second thought don't while you're there oh god, while you're three Oh, okay that makes sense. While you three are out there if this Aaron guy isn't dead before you get to him, try to find some food and other supplies like ammo, medicine. You can do that. Meanwhile, Stay on the radio. Don't talk on it. Just listen. Now this is I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spoil it. But this is um this is uh Aaron and this is his scene. They should be here in about twenty minutes. Good. As soon as we take care of them. You'll be free to go. I swear to God, this better be the last time I have to do this. Take it easy, Aaron. Don't make your, don't make us kill you. Do you three honestly have to kill them? <sighs> Look, kid, we've explained it to you. How many times now? We have no food. Would you prefer we eat you instead of them? Quiet. Quiet, you. Is that broadcast again? They'll never make it out. The dots, by the way, are supposed to be static. So just visualize that when you read this. They won't let you. This last broadcast before static bomb gets dropped. That's great. Dropped where? Is this a joke? Oh, 
Uh. Why doesn't he ever respond? There are too many glitches for it to be a recording. It has to be a real person. It can't be too far away or we wouldn't be able to keep getting this, their signal in the first place. Let's not worry about it right now. We have other things to tend to at this at the moment. They're falling all over their words, people, just like me reading this. Okay. Sir, they're approaching the library. A man and a woman. A woman just when... A woman. Just when you think they're all dead. Can you see any weapons on there? On them. Right? That would make more sense than on there. Can you see any weapons on there? Can you see any weapons on them? I don't see any. They've entered the library, sir. I suggest you hide now. They're heading right towards you guys. Alright, Aaron. Don't mess this up or we'll kill you. Alright, Aaron. Don't mess this up or we'll... Okay, relax. Alright, Aaron. Don't mess this up or we'll kill all of you. So it's an ambush they're waiting for, and they're using this poor kid. He is a kid, in case you guys... You guys don't know that yet, but he's a kid. He's like a teenager. Okay. Knock, knock, knock. Aaron, are you in here? Aaron, are you in there? Hi, guys. It's about time. Come in and have a seat. So are you ready to go? Yes, but first I want to tell you guys something. There was another broadcast not too long ago. The same one we've been hearing about not letting us out. This was different. Something about a bomb. I couldn't record it and it hasn't broadcast again. It hasn't broadcasted again. Well, maybe Jay recorded it? We should go now. Guys, I have something else to tell you. We'll take it from here, Aaron. Who the hell are you guys? Aaron, you didn't say anything about other survivors. That was the plan. What plan? Does someone want to tell us what's going on here? Aaron, I think I'll let you tell them. Guys, this is J6 and J7. Don't forget about J5. Don't forget about me, J5. Aaron, who the hell are these idiots? They're ex-military turned cannibal. They've been tricking people to come... They've been tricking people to come down here for months. What, so you're... a part of all this? They told me if I could just get two more people, they'd let me go. Two lives for my freedom. Believe me when I say this, I'm sorry. I had no choice. It was three against one. Well, now it's three on three. Sorry. I'm free to go. We came here to save you, and you're just going to let us die. Well, Travis, it looks like it's just two against three. I don't know, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty good with the knife, but they're ex-military. I don't care what or who they are. Nobody is eating me. Those zombies never got a bite out of me. And I'll be damned if I let these idiots get one. We have ourselves a fighter. You guys have nothing. I'll kill all of you. Ooh, Mila's got fight in her. Can you tell? I love it. All right. I think I'm going to call this all, like, part one. Because I need to take a break. I'm 16 pages in of 68. And I've spent two or three hours trying to film just this much. So we're going to call this part one. I think it's built up anticipation enough. And you guys are probably reading that. So I'm going to quit really quickly before you guys do anything. And I will see you for part two next time. Bye-bye.